Morning, all. All right, we're starting off today talking about the Boston Bruins. The Boston Bruins have announced that they have signed uh, Bergeron and Krejci. So Bergeron continuing on with the Bruins, Krejci returning to the Bruins after a year overseas. Now for Bergeron, the cap hits $5 million. For Krejci, the cap hits $3 million. The team now has $1,258,333 in cap space. They do have the concern, which is Zaka is still a restricted free agent. So that has to be a concern because that cap hits higher. Oh, wait, don't worry about it. There's going to be a lot of money on LTIR to start the season. So the, the good news, if it's that, is that Marshawn, McAvoy, Grizzlick are three guys who it looks like will be um, starting the season on the injured list. LTIR for at least two of those guys, you'd have to think. And so for the Boston Bruins, this is an interesting year, right? <clears throat> you don't bring back Bergeron and Krejci because you envision your team falling out of the playoffs. But in the case that the Boston Bruins struggle this year, uh, there are a lot of guys here who, who could end up being rentals at the deadline, right? Uh, now, I don't think that happens with Bergeron. I, I don't think that if Boston were to have a rough season that he'd ask for a trade or that Bruins would look to make one. He's 37 years of age, coming off of a season where he played 73 games, 25 goals, 40 assists, 65 points. You know what you're getting with Bergeron. You're getting one of the better two-way forwards in the history of the game. You're getting a guy that even when he isn't scoring points like he did a couple years ago, is still very useful to your team. I do wonder, at age 37, do we see his offense drop off a little further this year? Does he end up maybe being a 55, 60 point guy? Which some may consider sacrilege, but I mean, it happens. The aging process happens to us all. Uh, now he is UFA next summer, as I mentioned about these deals here, as is Krejci, 36 years of age, coming off of a year in the Czech League where he played 51 games, had 20 goals, 26 assists, 46 points. The previous season in Boston, played 51 games, Eight goals, 36 assists, 44 points. Having Krejci back gives Boston a legit number two center if he comes back playing the way he did the year before he went to the Czech Republic, or Czechia, right? Czech Republic or Czechia, depending on how you uh, call it. So <clears throat> for Krejci, this is, this is going to be an interesting season because, again, it's a one-year contract. Uh, does he have the, the, the added oomph that's going to be needed uh, for Boston to be kept in games. This is a team that may have troubles with scoring this year. Now, Coyle, on this projection, and again, I used uh, Cap Friendly for this because we don't know who's going to be on whose line. I'm not overly worried about it. Uh, Coyle, 30 years of age, 82 games, 16 goals, 28 assists, 44 points. Coyle's work ethic is very good, but offensively, he is unpredictable. Goes on hot streaks, goes through long cold streaks as well. Uh, then you have Nosek, likely the fourth line center. He's 29 years of age. He's a UFA next summer as well in 75 games, three goals, 14 assists, 17 points. So this is interesting that three of the four centers are on expiring contracts. One thing that could be good for Boston this year is all these expiring contracts. Next summer, let's just say Don Sweeney's still GM next summer, and I know there are Bruin fans who won't like the idea of Don Sweeney being GM again next summer, but... If he is and if he wants to revamp, remake this team, he may very well have the cap space and the ability to do so. Uh, Taylor Hall, 81 games, 20 goals, 61 or 41 assists for 61 points. He's 30 years of age. Uh, for, for Hall, I thought last year, and, and much like Coyle, he had good periods of the, of the season. He had others where he struggled offensively. Uh, David Pasternak's 26, 72 games, 40 goals, 37 assists, 77 points. He's a UFA next summer. And this is where things get really interesting. We've got a core of players in Boston, including Bergeron, including Marshawn, who have left money on the table to sign contracts, right? So Pasternak's likely going to get asked to leave money on the table, where it's like, okay, <clears throat> on the UFA market, you could draw $10 million a year. You are a proven 45, 50 gold man. But here in Boston, we like to keep things fiscally responsible. How does eight million a year feel? And again, I'm just using numbers. I'm not. I'm not worried about what the actual numbers are. But if Pasternak says, you know, I'd, I'd actually really like to get paid this time around because I'm 26. I'm in my prime. This might be my one chance. And so, as much as I want to see Pasternak stay as a Bruin for his whole career, we just never know what might happen, right? So this is a big year, and the Boston Bruins kind of need to show Pasta. <clears throat> that they're still going to be competitive and they're going to keep doing this every year, right? Thus, bringing back Krejci and Bergeron is key 
for it being able to hold on to a guy like Pasternak. Then you've got DeBrusque, who rescinded his trade trade request. 25 years of age, 77 games, 25 goals, 17 assists, 42 points. But if he gets off to a slow start, then trade rumors will start again. That's kind of how it works. Uh, for DeBrusque, I, I like DeBrusque. The 25 goals are nice. Uh, you'll notice that Bergeron, 20 goals. Hall, 20 goals. Pasternak, uh, Bergeron, or Pasternak and, and DeBrusque are all 20-plus goal scorers. But for Boston, losing Marshawn Hurts from that direction. And there there is... There is going to be potentially some issues with scoring with this team if you do see that further regression from, from Bergeron. And again, that's just an age thing. It happens. Krejci is not projected to be a 20-goal scorer. So where are the goals going to come from if if Pasternak uh, gets off to a slowish start? Because again, without Marshawn, it does kind of throw things off a little bit. But we'll see. Uh, Craig Smith in 74 games, 16 goals, 20 assists, 36 points. And again, another player could be hot and cold last year. Uh, he's a UFA next summer as well. Uh, Pavel Zaka, of course, is currently a restricted free agent. 25 years of age and 70 games, 15 goals, 21 assists, 36 points. So Zaka, they're counting on a little more from. He is 25, and of course, in most cases, players are what they are in their mid-20s. So we'll see this season with Zaka whether or not he's able to take that next step. Then you've got Nick Foligno, 34 years of age, 64 games. The offense seems to be gone with Foligno. Two goals, 11 assists, 13 points. He's an unrestricted free agent next summer as well. So you've got Bergeron, Krejci, Nosek, Pasternak. You've got Craig Smith. You've got Foligno. That's a lot of forwards on expiring contracts. It's a lot of players that if Boston were to fall out of contention, could find themselves on the block. And it's a lot of cap space next summer. So the good side of this, if you're a Bruins fan, is they are going to have a lot of cap space next summer if they don't re-sign these players. The problem is there's some key guys here they're going to want to re-sign. Uh, Trent Frederick, 24 years of age, 60 games, 8 goals, 10 assists, 18 points. We know what we're going to get with Frederick. It is not the offense and the goals that, that really highlight his game. Uh, the tough side of his game, the hitting side of his game, that's where it is. Oscar Steen. In 20 games this past season, two goals, four assists for six points. He's 24 years of age as well. I've liked Steen at points, as, uh, and, and he is a purely a bottom six forward. Uh, for depth up front, you've got Wagner. Studnika is going to try to push his way into this group as well. I could see Studnika making this team ahead of Steen, absolutely. But with Studnika, how much upside is there? And then two two rookies that could make things interesting out of camp. You have John Beecher, who's projected as the center at the NHL level, could end up playing the wing to start. And then you have Fabian Lysel. Now, he's a right winger, and if Lysel comes in and if he's ready, this could absolutely help the attack quite a bit. So in the event that Beecher or Lysel are ready to play, we're in good shape. But Beecher at the NHL level, uh, at, at the least to start, very, very likely to end up starting in that bottom six. Lysel might end up being a guy who takes quickly to the game. But again, it's it's just projection, right? Uh, then on the blue line, you have Lindholm, uh, Carlo, Riley, Clifton, Forbert, and Connor Carrick. Without McAvoy and Grizzlick, <clears throat> it's tough. It's tough, and offensively, it is very difficult uh, to, to find the points here that are necessary. It feels like blue lines now are offensively minded. They activate quickly, and it's a lot of that. Right now, Hampus Lindholm, 71 games, 5 goals, 22 assists, 27 points. He's 28 years of age. They signed him to his long-term contract when they got him from Anaheim. That contract could be a problem. In the event that this team is is struggling, in the event that... And we don't know how Lindholm over a full season will play in Boston. He might be fantastic. He might not, right? And, of course, then there's the issue of can he stay healthy for the full season? Can he, can he fill in for, for, for what McAvoy does early in the season and for how long? Uh, Carlo, 25 years of age, 79 games, 6 goals, 9 assists, 15 points. Carlo's purely purely a defensive defenseman, mainly. Uh, the 6 goals, though, are the highest goal total of any of the defensemen in this top 6, this projected top 6. Uh, Mike Riley, 29 years of age, 70 games, 4 goals, 13 assists, 17 points. Connor Clifton, 27 years of age and 60 games, 2 goals, 8 assists, 10 points. He's an unrestricted free agent next season. Uh, Forbert in 30 games, 76 goals, 4 goals, 10 assists, 76 games, 4 goals, 10 assists, 14 points. And Connor Carrick, who didn't make an appearance in the NHL last year, <clears throat> 28 years of age, depth defenseman, and of course, Jack Ashan. They're going to, I think Ashan is going to be given an opportunity to make it on, into this lineup, and we'll see whether or not 
uh, that that helps out his progression because they really are going to need somebody to step up in the absence of McAvoy and Grizzlick, right? Um, and these are not small injuries in terms of time either. It's not like, you know, the second week of October, all these guys are going to be back. In net, going to be an interesting battle this year. Swayman's 23, Olmark's 29. But in, in terms of save percentage, Olmark was a 917, Swayman was a 914. Olmark got off to a rough start. Um, <clears throat> during the season, both goaltenders had their hot and cold streaks. Uh, they need one of these guys to emerge as a real, you know, 55-game guy, while the other guy would play, you know, roughly around 30. You've got to remember goalies get pulled during the season. So they don't they don't have exactly 82 games played. You'll usually see at least a few. So I'll say 55 for one and 30 for the other. Swayman's going to end up being the guy in Boston. I believe that. I do have a Swayman jersey in part because of that. But yeah, uh, we'll see if Olmark is able to come out really well. This could be the big difference maker. Without that ability to get those goals with a blue line that does not score a lot, it may rest quite a bit on the goaltending and whether or not they can keep them in games. Boston may end up being a team that needs to win games 2-1, to 3-1 to one this year, and they may need to do that a lot. Uh, depth, of course. Also, Keith Kincaid in net is a third that if somebody gets hurt, he can step in and he could be a decent, a decent option for them in net, right? Uh, so this is going to be an interesting team to watch this year. I do expect a lot of people to pick them to drop out of the playoffs. I'm I'm on the fence myself as to whether or not I see them in the playoffs, but it is going to be a very interesting 2022-2023 uh, season for the Boston Bruins. This is a team that it could it could go either way. We could see Bergeron have a great start to the season. Krejci fits right in. Everybody's getting along with everybody else. And then by the time those guys come back from injury, maybe Boston's kept themselves in the hunt, and then they get red hot. But it's not always that easy. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Now that they've brought back Krejci and Bergeron, are the Boston Bruins a playoff team? Are they not? Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And hey, thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.